Well, we, as we were just hearing there, the importance of logistics, um, particularly with online shopping now, is just so incredible. Um, more than ever, we need that trade to flow, um, whether we're getting our orders delivered by noon or many, of course, of the other uh, online shopping um, providers in the market. Um, and for our next guest, uh, Karan Adani is the Chief Executive Officer of Adani Ports and SEZ. The, it's a $25 billion logistics company and business of the diversified Adani portfolio. And I'm happy to say that Karan Adani is with us right here today at the conference. So Karan, if you could come up on stage, that would be fantastic. Great to have you with us here. Thank you. Um, obviously, the logistics sector is, you know, growing in, in importance. Are you, are you, have you noticed the demand increase specifically over the last couple of years since the pandemic sort of hit? So I think uh, the pandemic showed us uh, two things. Uh, it showed us that, and especially from a trade and logistics point of view, uh, First is that our uh, trade network, as a global trade network, it's quite vulnerable to uh, having eggs in one basket. So you know, most of the countries or most of the manufacturing being in China and uh, uh, you know, being the distribution hub for the whole world. Uh, so I think the pandemic showed us that. Second, it also showed us um, the innovation in the logistics sector. Uh, when push comes to show. Um, you know, I'll be the first one to admit that uh, shipping industry and port industry, we are one of the last adopters of technology. And uh, we, as an as, as industry, we only do it if we, if we are pushed into a corner. So, um, so I think uh, you know, what we are seeing is a transformation uh, globally. Uh, we are seeing uh, supply chain being more distributed rather than uh, being concentrated. Uh, I think the role of technology, what, uh, what, what I've been hearing also from our earlier speaker, uh, the role of technology, uh, the adoption in technology uh, to, uh, to, to improve the efficiency in the logistics sector, uh, that is at an exponential space. And uh, my view is uh, we, in next 10, 15 years, we will reach, as, a, as, as, a, as, as consumers, we will reach at a pace where, uh, because of technology, logistics would be as good as zero cost. And it's something to, something to uh, you know, something that um, we always think about and we grapple that how do you, how as a uh, company we, we work towards that. But we do believe that uh, there's so much of disruption happening. Uh, in this space, uh, and which is good, which is a healthy disruption in my view. So your father started the business um, 33 years ago. Obviously, um, you are now, um, you know, the second generation taking on that business. What, what did your father sort of tell you about how you need to do business, and is, <laughs> is, he, is it adapting to change quick enough? Are you adapting to the change? No, I think if you look at the group, uh, you know, as you, as you mentioned, we are, we are still a relatively young group. Uh, we are 33 year old, um, started by my father, first generation. Uh, we, we started as a trading, uh, trading house and then eventually moved into infrastructure, uh, whether it's ports, uh, power, uh, and renewable space now. And uh, as you look at the group, um, you know, two things uh, which which we, which we work. One is that we align the, the strategy towards uh, the needs of the nation. So, so we believe that, um, especially in India, uh, you have such a large population, such a large demand. And, and if you get a pulse of what the country needs and you align your business strategy and you, uh, you adapt to that quickly, the market is there. So you don't have to you know, search for the market. And in our view, uh, you know, change is constant. 
you have to keep evolving you know starting from trading to moving to infrastructure and now we are moving into b2c businesses and uh, you know we do see technology doing uh, being a big, big disruptor so how do you how do you again change uh, with uh, uh, with 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 the new norms i think that 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 is the key and uh, as a second generation uh, you know we we have a big responsibility because it's not just about uh, you know maintaining what has been given we have been given a, a a sort of a huge platform to work on uh, but it's not just about maintaining it but how do you keep growing it and uh, more importantly how do you preserve it so that you can pass it on to the next generation so we are we have a huge responsibility as a custodian of uh, of what has been given to us to 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 ensure that we just we grow it we evolve the 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 models the businesses around it and uh, you know and then we pass it on so something that the next generation should be very proud of uh, of taking it over with technology is this in a sense connecting um, is it 13 ports now in india yes, alone so exactly. is that helping to connect is there any need for connection between all those uh, different entities see uh, the way we work is uh, you know within i mean it's not just the 13 ports but we also have uh, a logistics platform which uh, connects the ports so through rail network through warehousing and through trucking and uh, you know even from uh, our business point of view you know as apsc said adani ports we are also transforming so you know we we are a port company with 13 ports and we've covered the whole geography of india and uh, the advantage that we have over our competitors is when we go to a customer we give them a pan india solution so we can't we don't tell them that only i'll serve part of your needs part of your needs you serve from your uh, you know serve from my competition uh, we that's that's our advantage and our usp the next step what we are moving towards uh, is you know integrating it with our logistics platform and basically saying that you know i will deliver up to your port gate i mean up to your factory gate and it will be cheaper than what you're doing today and that's that's the promise that uh, we are going to our customers with and we're saying that you leave the logistics to to us you know you don't have to you don't need to have a logistics team of yours to to manage all of this you know we we will give you uh, on time delivery we will give you at a cheaper cost and we'll give you a reliable service so that's that's the business model that we are evolving and it's it's a mix of both it's a mix of infrastructure as well as uh, technology on top of it to to merge the infra and the technology to give that visibility to give that efficiency to our customers one key topic at the moment is obviously the environment and what businesses should be doing for the environment is there any pressure on you to to reach esg targets and and what are you doing in your business to to reach those targets so uh, let me put it this way climate change is a big uh, disruptor at the same time in our view it's a big opportunity as well uh, and and my father always says that uh, you know the next trillion dollar companies are going to come from uh, from two industries uh, or two changes one is uh, people who are aligning with the climate change and the second is with the technology transformation which is coming so i think uh, with the climate change uh, aspect of it each company has to align to it and it's not whether investors are talking or not but as part of survival uh, as a part of survival and being relevant in the uh, in the global market uh, th this is uh, this is no more a debate it is something that you have to align and you have to you have to adopt to it and you have to make those changes uh, part of the group uh, you know what we have quickly moved into is renewable space so our renewable platform started in 2014 and uh, today i'm happy to say our renewable platform is 10 gigawatts it's larger than our thermal uh, portfolio and uh, uh, and we are very clear that by 2025 it will be a 25 gigawatt uh, portfolio so it will be one of the largest uh, globally uh, on the port sector you know we are uh, aligning again to those climate changes 
in that we have put a clear cut goal of being carbon neutral by 2025. And it's a mix of um, you know, everything from how do you protect the marine diversity around it and how do you grow it to how you are electrifying, um, uh, electrifying most of your operations. And uh, the third part is how do you consume your electricity through renewable sources. I think what is also important is you know, even on the, on the uh, renewable space, you know, things are changing very fast. Uh, I think people are talking now, as you would have heard, people are now talking about hydrogen. So it's no more just about solar and wind, but how do you go towards hydrogen and make it sustainable? Because the minute you have a sustainable fuel which is available to all the countries, that's when uh, you know, countries like India or China would look at weaning out coal. Because end of the day, we, we, as a country, we don't have an alternative. We, we are not a gas producing country uh, to the level that we need that we can substitute coal to gas. So until we don't find a viable solution, economically viable solution, uh, it's very difficult as a country to wean out. As a group, you can obviously say that I don't want to touch it, but end of the day, we, um, you know, a large part of the population which does not have access to um, does not have access to a uh, reliable source of electricity, uh, you have to balance that out. And I think, uh, in my view, government has a very clear view. We also have a very clear view that if we are able to find a sustainable, uh, commercially viable option than coal, I think everybody will move. Why not? And we do believe that uh, hydrogen is the next step for that. And that's what we are, we are working towards. Uh, Karan, I want to just quickly ask you about, you know, this, this question of, of um, the UAE and where, where does the UAE fit in with, uh, with your operations and your ambitions in the future? Sure. So we, we have uh, had a setup over here since last 25 years. Our whole shipping division runs from, uh, from UAE. And, uh, you know, more importantly, we look at uh, UAE as a partner. Uh, uh, not just from a trade perspective, but also to look at from a technology perspective. And that's how uh, we keep evaluating what are the new uh, options available uh, to, 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 to look at building and building that relationship. End of the day, India and UAE enjoys a great relationship from a government to government perspective. And uh, culturally very similar. So ability to, uh, you know, do more trade, ability to set up investments is much easier and uh, less, uh, less issues when it comes to cultural uh, integration. So that's how we are looking at it. We are looking at multiple opportunities uh, to, to look at uh, what we can do out of here. Great. So um, just, just finally, uh, Karan, we're running out of time, but you know, where, where do you see the Adani group in the, in the future? I mean, diversification, is that still very much a, a key for you? Uh, see, group, uh, basically, we are in two aspects. We are in two verticals. We are in transport and logistics, and then we are in energy vertical. And would you branch into any other realms of business in that sense? No, uh, not really, because uh, end of the day, we are very uh, focused uh, organization. Uh, we do believe uh, that uh, our, our internal belief is stick to what you know. Right. So what is your core competency? You stick to that and you keep innovating and you keep changing in that. And uh, we do believe that these are the two sectors that we understand, uh, uh, understand and we are good at. So that's what we look at uh, and we keep innovating over there. So we keep changing, we keep uh, diversifying our portfolio within that sector. Well, you're definitely doing a good job there. Karan Adani, really appreciate you being with Thank us. You. Thank you very much. Thank you.